Well, wins for the two youngsters so far here on stage two in Minehead for the UK Open. Fabian Schmutzler, the teenager from Germany, and Sebastian Bielecki of Poland. Contrasting wins. It is charitable to describe Mario van der Mahada as a youngster, so we're just not going to bother. But Jules van Dongen, the Dutch dragon, dragon is a youngster in terms of his darting career. Things have happened very, very quickly for Jules van Dongen, the American-based Dutchman. Two new tour card holders, both coming through EU Q School and, to be honest, dominating EU Q School. Jules van Dongen, it was all sewn up before we got to the final day. Mario van der Mahada would, I mean, he, I think he might have amassed a record points at Q School. He was just, I mean, he ended the, the four days of action over in Niedenhausen with a million points. I mean, it was, it was already guaranteed about halfway through the second day that Super Mario was going to get on the PDC Tour for the first time. Both of these guys were supposed to be playing at the lakeside, of course, for the WDF World Championship. I believe that Jules is going to play in it after the PDC gave them special dispensation to play in it if they so wish. It's been postponed, of course, until next month. I don't think Mario's taken the option to go and play, which I don't fully understand, to be honest. Yeah, I was surprised by that and, and equally as surprised that Ross Montgomery chose not to as well. Yeah, that was weird. But... I suppose it is his choice, and I've watched a lot of Mario's darts over the last two or three years. He is very robotic in his action. He does have the odd little snatchy follow-through. Yeah, well, there's second dart, didn't he? Yeah. But he is very, very good. He is incredibly solid. I'm just really looking forward to seeing what level... Jules, or as George oh, Norville put it, Jules van Dongen. <laughs> I, I like the ring of that, actually. To see what level he can attain. A lot of his averages that we saw from Q School were mid to high 80s. If he is going to survive on tour after two years, he's going to have to find another 5 or 6%, in my opinion. Since yeah, I think that's fair, but it's, it's also very early days for him, isn't it? And the only way you get better is by playing amongst the best and giving it a go. So true. He needs to be tested now. It's... Coming from these feeder systems like Dart Players Australia or the CDC in North America, you maybe think that 85 to 92 is good enough to dominate over there. But when you come to the elite, that's where you are tested to the limit and you have to find those 96 to 105 averages more regularly. Well, look, shout out to the CDC because I think the stuff they're doing over there in North America is really good and it's what's been needed to try and help American darts get to the next level. But... While they're doing some great work, it is a step up again to come and play on the PDC circuit. You know, the likes of, of Danny Baggish have been finding it tough while they're over here. But it's a process. This is what it's about. Win your, your regional tour or do well on your regional tour. Make that step and then see if you can improve your game as you go along. There are plenty of players. A guy who won this event, Nathan Aspinall dropped off the tour because he wasn't playing well enough no, but indeed. over a period of time improved to the point where he was able to go and win a major title here in Minehead. And Nathan Aspinall will be here but with big injury concerns with that wrist of his so we will talk about that in the coming games but let's give Jules a look at 86 two 18s for Bolt or three of them for double 16 or neither. But it does get the setup with Van der Bohara on a couple of options here. Let's see if he's a treble eight kind of guy. When in fact he goes for double that for double eight. Surgical from Mario. And we are going to see plenty of him this year, in my opinion. Not just in events like this and on the floor, but if we get him. In Euro Tours as well, you'll get to see and hear that walk-on which starts Mario. It's just good fun. Easy fire. I'm very surprised, actually. I'm just looking through the, my database where these two apparently have not played each other before. And I thought over the four days at Q School, it would have been inevitable because they were always 
there at the the back end of it, but 59. apparently not. Unless those matches haven't been entered into the database, but for the next two years, these guys will be playing a lot of PDC darts. I'm told that Jules has now quit his job over in the States. I don't know if that means he's going to be just sort of floating around the country sofa surfing or whether he's going to set himself up in a particular part of the UK so he can dedicate himself to the PDC circuit. East Midlands seems to be quite popular at the minute. Yeah, certainly is. Dimitri Vandenberg, Damon Hetter. Jose de Sousa stops around theirs when he needs to. We've had our first ton plus average in the UK Open for this year, coming from Jamie Clark of Scotland. And he has beaten fellow Scot Sean McDonald by six legs to nil. So, with the games that have been completed, not a good day for Scotland so far because Ryan Murray's out. Darren Beveridge was the first person eliminated in this tournament, and Sean McDonald has joined them. Well, Jamie Clark, of course, another player who came through Q School this year. He came through the UK one that was in Milton Keynes. And similar to these guys, it was done and dusted 22. before the end of the final day. He amassed so many points. Jamie Clark is a good player. And he's someone who can find that next level. He's already averaged 102 on tour this year. And I think he's one to watch. 100. Young man with a big family. Lots to support. So that's his motivation. Debutant Vladimir Anderson is out at the Ooh. hands of Steve Clayson. Maybe a bit of a nervy performance from Vladimir. He's 78 and a half average today, so his debut is done. He'll have to get ready for the next tournament, unfortunately. Okay, he was looking at the 19s there, Jules, but he's moved it into the next door bed. And for the second leg running, he's been looking at a sort of mid-range combo finish and he's made a mess of it. And Mario has a bit of room to the right-hand side. Double ten. Now, what does Jules want to do here? Because if this was Christoph Ratajski, he'd be going for treble 12. There you go. Double 16. This one isn't blocked. It's found. Great stuff. I don't know about you, Dan, but when you look at Mario van der Bahada, do you think he looks like an art critic? He, I mean, he does. I'm not sure how many art critics have barbed wire tattooed around their wrist, but I get what you mean. Cool ones. But they have very different techniques, these lads. It's something I love to watch from players that have just come through, say, Q School or from different avenues. But look at the shoulders of... Mario, they stay perfectly still, but then you look at the shoulders of Van Dong and there's a lot of movement in the upper body. It's a sway, it's 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 a timed throw. Look at this moving in like that. So if he gets the timing wrong, he is going to drag it left. Yeah, it's they are 57. strange looking throw, particularly Jules. I have to say, there does seem to be a lot of movement there. I mean, compare and contrast what we've just seen from Sebastian Bialetsky, who just sets himself up and it just looks like the arm moves and glides through. Um, I mean, there is a sort of... Super Mario has a sort of waft of the arm. A bit sort of, it's almost like Martin Adams-esque, sort of a flourish at the end of the throw sometimes. They're trying to get some extra points for the dismount. Yeah. Yeah, some of the throws like that one. Beautiful. Just replicate yeah. that one. But that one's different. I mean, you, you talk about some of the greats wow. of the game and the flourishes that he had. I mean, you look back at Jockey Wilson. Some yeah. of those were, <laughs> were so good to watch. I, th I think using the word flourish is perhaps charitable where Jockey was concerned. Effective, though. Mike Gregory was pretty good at that. And we're in Mike Gregory territory, of course. He's from the southwest of England. One of the most underrated players in history. Absolutely. Should have been a world champion. Agreed. And it was the 30th anniversary of that match with Phil Taylor this week. Apparently. Well, Jules 
42. Particularly coming down from the 19s, he's missed into the 7s, he's missed into the 3. There's just been some messy stuff at the back end of legs when he's moved around the board. Admittedly, he's still in a very good position in this leg, looking to go into the lead. The North American tune does continue after this one. We will get a look at Danny Laubi. Hold on to your hats for that one. But Van Dongen's looking for 57 and tops. Only just misses out. 57. He has a guaranteed extra visit with Mario North of 170. So you're right, Dan. It's just a little bit cagey at the minute. Waiting for someone to impose themselves. Well, that's all kinds of pressure as Mario van der Bahada leaves himself on tops. Van Dongen isn't moving. Because he evidently could see double top and pins it. It is 2-1 to the Dutch Dragon. I mean, this could be any score, to be honest. Love games like that, where they can't be predicted... I mean, who predicted a 6-0 for Michael van Gerwen against Peter Wright last night? I know I didn't, that's for sure. But one person who is watching this keenly is Connor Scott, someone who's already made a semi-final on tour this year in his first season on tour. Someone who 86. a lot of people think has got a very high level of ability, including myself. He plays the winner of this game, and then whoever comes through that little cluster will play Willie or Connor. Yeah, obviously, the, the first round is when we see the amateur qualifiers, challenge tour, 16. dev tour, and the bottom 32 in the rankings of the tour card holders. So you'll be seeing a lot of guys playing in their first TV events in the PDC, including these guys here, just got themselves on the tour. Connor Scott, another player 99. who came through Q School this year. One thing we should say is that not only Boris Koltsov wasn't able to come to this tournament same had to be said for Mikel Unterbuchner who for personal reasons couldn't be here so it was a field of 158 so a couple of buys were gifted through round one for Brian Roman another Belgian a man who you've had a little bit of interaction with on social media this week yeah so he was uh, just saw Brian earlier on this morning he had made his debut on the Euro Tour last weekend in Risa very creditable one as well. He's quick, isn't he? He is. He's quick and he's good. 43. He's what? cleared up that he, it is pronounced Ryan Raman, not Raman. So he's rejected the potential nickname of the Noodle. Well, we'll just have to call them Raman no, Noodles, which Ryan. makes them a bit posher. Yeah. Right. Mario van den Bahada is in a spot of bother here. Jules van Dijk, like he is, he watches every dart, doesn't he? He's not one of these guys just focusing on his own game. He re he's watching every single move that Mario makes. I tell you what, he's well built as well. He's a he's a tall unit. And he's got a lot of upper body strength, that's for sure. He's he's very much built like an NFL quarterback. He's tall. He's rangy. We're up against the experienced Van der Bahara. Is it 2 2? Almost. Now Van Dongen is looking to complete 78. To be at the halfway point. That leaves 66. 16 and Bull should be the route. And he misses. Again, it's missing a big number on a combination finish or, or set up play at the back end of a leg for Jules Van Dong and just made things a little trickier. That very nearly bust his score. That's so unfortunate. It was too close, that marker, wasn't it? He's clicked off it and missed inside. Yeah, it hit the post, but too much of the post. Van Dong, he's got the same question to be answered and he finds the gap he didn't get enough of a bounce or oh, the perils of having a marker double four for a level game he 
Well, there you go. Don't get any more, because that's the best way. Put them way, way wide. And then your last dart. Straight in. You look at the dart shirt of Van Dongen, and you think for dart shirt animation, that dragon is very impressive. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff going on. He's, he's obviously Dutch heritage. He's been based in the States for a lot of his adult life. That dragon looks Chinese inspired to me. I mean, he's, it's a smorgasbord of cultural influences for Jules Van Dongen. He's been based in Missouri, hasn't he? I wasn't sure. I'm not sure what he did for a living, what job he has just quit. I was asking around earlier, but couldn't find a sufficient answer. Yeah, I found out he was based in Missouri, which means that if I do get a chance to speak to Jules, I'd, he'll probably be a Kansas City Chiefs fan. And why wouldn't he be? Great team. And if he's looking to massage his inner Patrick Mahomes, then he might well be the MVP of today because there's definitely something to like about the way that Van Dongen plays this game. There's a lot of thought with every single shot. Nothing is left behind. I just, I, I just love watching players come from different countries. You know, this is, as the sport continues to grow, we'll see players emerge from different countries with interesting stories. And yeah, I know it's still going to be a game that is hugely influenced by, you know, great cadres of dark players from St. Helens and Essex and the northeast of England. But it is fascinating watching these talents emerge. You know, we've just seen a 16-year-old from Germany go and win at a TV tournament for the first time. Sebastian Bieletsky from Poland. That's only a nation that's emerged in recent years as a potential force in darts. And North America, we've already said about the work that's going on there to try and breed competitive dart players that can mix it with the big boys. What I really like at the start of this season and every season is looking at the name of a dart player and wondering how much fun it's going to be for John Part to see it. <laughs> I, both of these names are perfect, especially when you think about new uh, tour card holder Josh Rock. Yeah. Josh Rock. Josh, that yeah. just has a great North American ring to it. Now, he might fancy a 180 here if he finds the first two, but... No such luck as Mario van der Bahara is going to be looking at 60. A checkout already completed by Jules. Mario, you require 60. Well, 20 for tops. And he gets it done. Van der Bahara. 1 0 up, 2 1 down. 3-2 up. This game just goes back and forth like a pendulum as the Belgian throws now for a 4-2 lead. See if he can open up a two-leg gap. Become big news in Belgium. Darts over the, the rise of Dimitri Vandenberg to one of the world's best players. Really has ignited interest in this sport. It's always had players, Belgium. It's always had tournaments. It's got a background in darts. But it's getting a lot more attention from the media and the general public. And Van den Bahada now, along with Brian Romano, we mentioned, Dimitri Vandenberg, Kim Hybrex, who's playing some excellent stuff at the minute. He really does look like he's getting back to where he was. A major finalist, Kim Hybrex, in this venue, remember, the Players' Championship Finals. I mean, he's going back a decade, but he's done it here in Minehead. Let's not forget as well that Mario's had a very impressive start to the season stats wise he might not have picked up many wins but he's averaging 95 and change for the season so far and if he can maintain that level of performance throughout the course of the season i believe we'll see him again here in november for the players championship finals he's a dangerous customer he's already beaten brendan dolan and luke humphreys this season and he's had ton topping averages against Scott Mitchell and Martin Schindler and lost both those matches. Mm. Yeah, I think he's going to be dangerous. One thing you can't do with Mario is you can't crack him. He's one of those Central European style players that just isn't bothered about anything that goes on. He just wants to play. We see certain players on the tour who get bothered about 
I don't know, walking on certain bits of carpet or docks starts being clinked together. Mario's not like that, doesn't care, he just wants to win. And this leg could be in his hands if he finds a 45. Unable to find the treble 15 that would have left him on top. Van Dongen managed to get himself to a finish. It's a tricky one. He could go two tops. I wonder, just with that dot, I know it, it was in there, but it didn't look much help to him. He had to sneak it into the left or right. Van der Bahar is going right. Further right, further south. 50. That's a let off for Jules. 40. To bring us back to 3 3 in what is a cagey, nervous first round match. Here could be costly misses. You can see from his expression that he expects to be 4 2 down now. That's a safe one. That was a proper attack. Five. Double five has its pitfalls in this match. Van der Bahara has had no guide and still hit the double. That's no guide for Jules. And that's just in. But what I like about that, Dan, is the fact that it was nowhere near double 15, which yep. busts the score. If you get the double six, you've still got double four left. So if you are going to miss the central part of double 10, get it high. Okay, well, look, when you were thrown at double 10 then, Paul, were you aiming at the middle of the double 10 bed, or were you just giving yourself a little bit of extra room 96. and just aiming towards the top end of it? Top third. Top third. Yeah, because my tendency was always for the dart to be delivered the tiniest bit low. Mm. So my miss was low. Just give myself a bit more margin for error there so I would look at the top third of the double ten and try and hit it and there weren't many occasions where I busted on double 15 I think maybe once or twice that happened yeah you will see a lot of play I mean it, it's the most common bust hitting double 15 when you're going for double 10 I don't well certainly statistically it was a while back when I think Wikipedia put that out I don't know if it remains so but it's certainly one you see quite a bit I a one uh, very, very costly one. I remember here in the quarterfinals, Ian White doing exactly that on match darts, and then Gerwin Price took out 160 to win the game in the last leg decider. But you see double six, double four plenty of times from players looking going to the board wanting 20. 98. Yeah, there's a lot of doubles on the board where you don't have that cushion. With double 10, you've got it north with double six. But when you look at things like double eight, it's 16s and 11s either side. You haven't got that cushion. You've got to be accurate with the weight of the dart. But it's interesting that you mentioned Gerwin Price because he was the one who was gifted that shot at 160 with that bus shot by Ian White five years ago. But in this tournament, we've had 10 winners in 19 years. Four multiple champions. Taylor's won this one five times. Wade and Michael Van Gerwen three times and Barnevelt twice. But only two people have been runner-up in this tournament on two occasions as well. And that's Gerwin Price and Peter Wright, the two top players in the world right now. Mm, interesting. Well, uh, countless times Jules Van Dongen has, had, has finishes like that one treble finishes and he's missed a big number and the chance has just gone immediately Van der Bahada wants double four now, because of that miss Jules Van Dongen is coming back for 37 which tells me that the last visit included a miscount because nobody wants to leave 37 on purpose where does he want to go? Is it five? Is it one? It's five for double 16. Can't find it. He cost himself a shot at a double, didn't he? Should have had three in hand. Oh, no. Don't go too far north on double two. What a gift for Jules Van Dongen. Oh, 
Well, the lead has changed hands as many times as it possibly could have done in this game. Van der Bahada, 1-0 up, 2-1 down, 3-2 up, now 4-3 down. It's very much the kind of game that you would watch with Mario van der Bahada. Because I don't know if you ever caught his semi-final at the Indigo with Jim Williams en route to the, the final of the BDO World Championship. But that one, up and down, up and down, up and down, just a typical Mario type of match. Well, it's had, we've had bus scores, we've had miscounts. I mean, Mario left himself on 166 in that previous leg. We've had a lot of missed darts at double. There's been some good stuff in there as well, but it is a messy, messy game. Whoever loses this walks away from it thinking, that's my fault. I should have won that game. The other guy was playing at a standard where I will feel I should have beaten him. It is a proper in the trenches dogfight of a game, this. And somebody's just got to drag themselves over the line. Another 60 for a two dart leave. And all he can do is cut it in half. Down to 140, but a very healthy lead for the man who is now behind in this match once again. Someone who wasn't behind at any point was John O'Shea in beating Nathan Rafferty by six licks to nil. So there goes one of my tips in Nathan Rafferty. Well done, me. Will it be well done, Mario? Well, well done if he leaves tops. He was so scared of busting it, wasn't he? So scared of busting it. That is better than busting it, Mario. And look, in many ways, he's left 60 a number of times. 59's better because you don't have that dart in the way. Could have done a Diogo Portella there and got the double 14. Yes, yeah. Double top then to win this one at a canter. Nobody is making life easy for themselves in this game. Unlike Roby John Rodriguez, I'll say, who has beaten Bradley Brooks, beaten him 6-1 over on the main stage. Want to have a guess at what Roby's averaged in that? I haven't got the stat screen in front of me, but I'm going to say about 97. Not even close. 108.6 for Roby John Rodriguez in what I think must be his highest TV average. One of his highest averages, full stop. I remember him averaging something like that in Zvola. Yes, about three I remember or four that. Years yeah. ago, and that was a ridiculous 96. performance. So we know he can do it, but can't say I'm surprised that he's put in something like that. He has the capability. Certainly does. Yellow class and former world champion, and Riley's qualifier this year is in action at the moment against Mark Rice, oh, and that is Mario oh, van den Bahada nice. pinning the maximum. That is the first of this contest. Not so good for Roby's brother Rusty because he's out at the hands of Ryan Harrington. Ryan Harrington, the, the great man's son. Rod is here this weekend. Ryan has averaged 95 and change, so I think Rod's going to be pretty chipper as Ryan makes his way into round two. Van den Bahada has just upped his level the last sort of five minutes or so. And if he can just keep it here, it should be enough to get him over the line. We, we talked about how well he's played this year. The standard of play. He's not been at that standard for the first seven legs of this game. But if he can drag his average up, which he's doing at the minute, he's dragged it into the 80s. They're both in the 70s for most of this match. If Van den Bahada is just getting back to his normal level of play here, he could race through the finishing line 77. at the back end of this match. Might take something like this just to ignite somebody that Mario chooses just to get rid of the one first. But he does find a really good third one. Now, Jules Van Dongen, who only has one win in a ranked event this year, is looking for tops for a 5-4 lead. And that is brilliant. Very reminiscent, actually, of the one game he has won against Martin Schindler. He did dominate that game because Schindler had a bit of a game off. But Dongan, who did get a ton-plus checkout to win that match against Schindler, has just found himself 
something of a catalyst to try and get himself closer to his Two. second win. Well, he's had so many problems all game, Jules Van Dongen, with the combination finishing, missing big numbers, but he got that one exactly right, and it may be the key moment in the game. Just when Mario van den Bahard had upped it, Jules Van Dongen produces the biggest check out of the match. 100. And it's broken that spell of the lead changing hands. He's just managed to hold off Super Mario and put himself on the brink of victory. It could change hands only one more time. And Mario is very hard to get rid of, that is for sure. So Jules is going to be tested mentally over the course of the next couple of legs because I have a feeling that we are going to go to that distance because Jules knows, Mario knows, and everybody else knows pretty much watching on that you can't leave a finish from 3 4 3. Van der Bahar is already on one. Well, it does look like we're going to go to a last leg decider for the second time already on this board. We saw Lunkai fan miss a match dart before going out to Fabian Schmutzler. Van Dongen will have the darts in the last leg decider. The average is on particularly brilliant 82. but what has happened before is irrelevant it's all about what happens from here yeah one good leg a checkout like that 107 from Jules well we might just be giving him a little tap on the shoulder here 140. You require 79. not so much with just two treble 20s there is Mario looking at treble 13 here <laughs> that's courageous <laughs> that's mad that's Martin Adams' style behaviour because that's what he does with 79, regardless of whether his opponent's on a double or any sort of finish. But this now was for the match, and Mario van der Bahara can count himself very fortunate that he's coming back. 88. Mario require 40. Well, double top. Wow. Double 19. Well, Mario van den Bahada took a huge risk by going treble 13 to make sure he didn't leave an awkward double and then ends up winning the leg on double 19. I think it's fair to say that Mario may not be the most astute of counters or tacticians on the dartboard. But like I said in the previous leg, what has gone before is irrelevant. It's all about a one-leg shootout now, and that is a superb start from Jules. Well, he may not be the child that Fabian Schmutzler is. But Jules Van Dongen, this is a huge day for him. Playing in a big TV event in PDC Darts just weeks after winning his tour card. It's been a whirlwind couple of years for the Dutch Dragon. Very, very young in terms of his darts career. This is a big, big moment for him. Can he get over the line? It's another one of the carrots, isn't it? When you get your card these days, you get an automatic 55. invite to the UK Open. In previous years, you had to then qualify to get here via the UK Open qualifiers. And while we're on that subject, Dan, I did a bit of research at the end of the last match. This is the first UK Open that we haven't seen Ooh, Justin Pipe in 15 five. years. Wow. And the first Butlin's Minehead UK Open that we have ever missed Justin Pipe. Well, if you're watching, Justin... You are missed. Didn't miss anything there, Mario, though, did he? Only a second 180 of the game. He's produced it in the last leg decider. He desperately needed it as well. Well, oh, he just wants to treble here. But doesn't get one. It's not the end of the world, but if Mario finds another two treble visit here, or even three... Don't hit six. Don't hit 60, Mario. Oh, well, I mean, hit more than that. There's that waft and the snatchy sort of follow through, and he's dragged it into the one segment. Oh, rescued! What a save! Okay, so now it's 54 for Bull. Gets that Bull to win the match. Oh, it's a beauty! Touchdown, Van Dongen! Fantastic stuff to get that win. 
beautifully done from the Dutch Dragon. Super Mario had plenty in that match, but not enough in the end. Great, and he's already on his way to his next match. We are on our way to our next match. It's been great here on board too so far today. But next, we are going to see, as I just scroll down my screen, it's going to be Danny Lowby. Will he score a touchdown? He's up against Nico Springer, who you did see on PDC TV last week.